there was a line in the essay and I remember writing it because when I wrote it, I had to stop. Chakai, I had to stop and be like, wow. I said, um, it wasn't okay that the minute he touched my hand, I already knew how to separate my body from my spirit because I already knew what was going to happen. And I dropped the pen and I was like, okay, we're done for today. I'm not happy. Okay, we're done. Welcome to Mind Your Isness. I'm Chokai, traveler, writer, artist, yoga and meditation coach, sharing stories, adventures and life hacks with an eclectic collection of friends around the globe. In this episode, performance art struggles in COVID times, coping skills, personal spirituality and more with producer, author, actor, playwright and poet, Andre Chulisi Rodriguez. She's I got to see how much Lucy's doing. I got to see what's up. <laughs> I'm doing well. I'm doing well. You know, I do work for the city. So I was up in the front lines when everything started. And it was a little little crazy because nobody knew what they were doing, heads or tails. And um, I had to take a week off. Like I had to go to work and be like, look, I'm not going to be in four weeks. I just had to like really readjust my mind. Because it was more of a mental thing than anything. Yeah. God. You know? So I had to really adjust my head. I had to bring back the spiritual walls up so I don't feel what the world is feeling because I'm an empath, so I pick all of that up. And it, it was intense. For for a minute there, it was a little, it's a bit much for me. You know what I mean? Like, like it was just, it's, you know, spiritually, death is walking the earth and she's, she's doing what she's doing, you know? And people like us who are spiritual, we feel that. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, because the, art, the artists are all, working it out all the empaths and artists mm-hmm. and energy workers mm-hmm. are like going through it and yeah. you know self-care is the name of the game and it's got us we got to step up big time yeah i had to tell all my godchildren you know, they were bugging out and i was like okay we're gonna have to get together we did a little prayer circle and um spirit came through and, and you know spirit was saying listen um it is gonna be here for a while and the only ones that are gonna survive are the ones that are connected to spirit those that are not connected to spirit are pretty much gonna get lost yeah. And the source. And I was like, okay, that's intense. Yeah, it's a lot. It is so much yeah. going on. And mm-hmm. uh, and right now, uh, like you said, you were on the front lines. What were you what were you doing on the front lines? Well, I worked for transit. Oh, so that's train, right. That's of, right. Yes, the yes, train yes. Was one of the biggest of course that were traveling the bug and transit being the corporation that it was wasn't willing to shut it down and at the same time they had all their workers out there with nothing we had no equipment we, we were pretty much on our own you know right they didn't know what was said nobody knew what was happening so i'm not really mad at them I'm, you know it, you know it is what it is so yeah just like that, that but that initial what the heck i mean god knows i mean mm-hmm. thank, thank god it's not as mm-hmm. bad as it was back in the 80s because you know when that came around and we were like what is this what is going on and yeah, nobody absolutely. knew nothing and, you know at one point everybody did go back to the 80s because it started to feel like the 80s and yeah. there was a, a slight panic and a and a big hush i would go to work and, and whoever was taking the train they were just it was it was so cathartic people were just walking around like zombies. it was horrible i was like okay this has got to get better yeah and i think yeah. it has. and you've been in bali for how long you know, I was going to go all over Indonesia, but then by the time February rolled around, we were people like, you know what, we need to bring this down. We need to shut this down. So I've been in Bali since February. Wow. Beautiful yeah, place. You know what? It's, the forces it's, that be needed you to be there. There's so many beautiful possibilities in this transition time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The, I agree. The, the ugly is real ugly. And it's going to get more mm-hmm. ugly. And so we can't be sitting around waiting for the ugly to stop. Because, <laughs> right. you know. Unfortunately. Yeah, that's unfortunately. Not the, it's, that ain't going to help just, nothing. I think a lot also has to do with uh, a lot of people that I speak to. I think that the earth is taking her time and saying, I'm done. I'm about to let all of you know that when I said stop, I meant what I said. <laughs> And those that get it, get it. And those that don't, I'm like, okay, well, you keep doing you, honey. I'm just going to chill here and ride this one out on a whole different wave because y'all people are bugging. Well, yeah, Mother stop. Earth is going to be like, what did I say? Oh, yeah, because I said to myself, she said, you know, the pandemic is here. People are still acting ignorant. So she was like, so let me just do some like crazy mad hornets. Just, <laughs> just, you know, just to stir things up. 
And then people still like this stupid. And she was like, oh, let me just add a sandstorm to that. And I was like, can you people just like sit and just sit still? Because you're going to, you know, she's going to turn it out and you guys are not going to be able to handle it. Because, you know, one of the one of the things that started to happen, you saw people around the world mentioning how, you know, when everything went down, everything locked down, all of a sudden you could see the sky. <laughs> You could hear the birds again, <laughs> like certain oh, area. Yeah. Fine. There were species of animals they've never seen come back again. <laughs> right. And let me tell you, this year, if you have allergies, you're going to gag because, honey, they're letting Earth pollinate. Honey, New York is with the sinuses up in here. Ooh, the allergies are killing everybody out here. <laughs> We're like, we ain't got COVID, but I still can't breathe. You know what right, I mean? Because all the blooms, all the blossoms Ooh, giving her chance. Everything. everything. They, yeah, like everything's got it. Like she's breathing. For me, Mother Earth is funny. Like, <sighs> okay. And I need to Central Park, take advantage of this. Central Park must be off the chain this summer. <laughs> Any, any park around New York City is in full green. I started seeing butterflies. Something I haven't seen in a while. They're going to white butterflies and monarch butterflies. And I was like, wow. All right. And the sinuses periods last longer here now. Before, you know, it's like morning allergies, night allergies, no baby. It's on all day. <laughs> uh, me and Claritin have become very good friends. <laughs> well, you I'm look good. Okay, you oh, look thank good. Thank you. Thank you, honey. Thank you. You know, we do we try to solidify the look before the tragedy. <laughs> like my mother used to say, you'll never I... catch me out of a red dirt if I drop dead, darling. Oh, <laughs> <yes, mother. laughs> oh, my God. How much are you like her? What do you think? Are you, are you, are you? Everything. Everything. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Because I moved my mother in with me. You know, she's not that age. Where, you know, she really can't learn it for herself. Uh-huh. And as I and I, you know, I've gotten this time to be like really look at her and, and and kind of study her and you know because I look you know I look at the bigger picture. I'm like, okay, God, why did you make this possible? Because I know that you're always teaching me something. So what's <laughs> up? And I'm a lot like her. Like you know, she's always she's still snappy. She's still sassy. She still has all types of comments. There's some things that come out of her mouth that I'm like. Um, you can't say that. And she's like, I'm 80 years old. I can say whatever the hell I want. <laughs> you got that right, honey. Who's going to tell you no? 80 years old. You know? But she's quick with it. She's, you know, she's, she's, yeah, she's a lot uh, like her. A lot like her. Oh Music lover, God. connoisseur. She's constantly joking. She had dirty jokes at the top of the hat. Like, oh. I'm like, wow, mom. I am so much your kid. Living it so much, it. yeah, Li- definitely, definitely. Living it, living definitely. it. Your hair is so long. It's it, yeah, it's it's weird, and I'm good. Look, look, look how look at all the gray. It's like so gray. I love it. I, I know. love. I'm loving it. it. Looks, it looks I hope it gray. holds up. I hold it holds up because like this. Look at that one. That one's like all gray almost. <laughs> oh wow! I, I want them all to go gray before it starts falling out. <laughs> yeah, right, right. It's like, just give me that one. Just give me that one pick. Yeah, yeah. Just give me that one like, photo say, yeah, of the of the. Yeah, the, right. The silver fox dress. Right. Looking like looking like Saruman. <laughs> Absolutely, darling. Yes. Oh, so, the, so then, like, so what does your day consist of? Like, you just do the meditation, just doing the yogas and all of that, right? Because you know what, like, I, I kind of tapped on a little bit is like that self care thing is like, you know, when things mm-hmm. step up, uh, often people like yourself who were, you know, we're familiar with taking care of ourselves because we know we have to do that. Mm-hmm. We've had to, and so I've, I've tried to step up my self care game, which is totally necessary, um, and I've been consciously going yeah you need to do yoga yeah you need to walk ride your bike do something so you're physical keep your physical right. moving then mentally how much you know what rabbit hole am i going down mentally <laughs> and what am i doing to balance that shit out right right because okay. you know we're very aware of that, that that we have to feed both sides right it's because you have to be aware you can't be look you can't carry the you can't carry the witchery that we carry and not understand the house of Gryffindor and Ravenclaw 
and Slytherin and all (laughs) All of that. I got children. I tell them, honey, when when you get to a certain level of spirit, you realize that there's a reason why the world is a smorgasbord and you have to learn how to balance yourself as you go along eating. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Some stuff you might eat knowing it's going to gain you calories. Some stuff you eat, you just don't you're going to flow. You just can't be floating all the time and you can't eat all the hot potatoes. You have to balance everything out. <laughs> uh, they look at me like, are you serious? I'm like, you have no idea, darling. I know, because we start talking in analogies, boo. You know we do that all the time. We start talking in well, analogies. Yeah. And people mm-hmm, are looking mm-hmm. at us like, what are you? It's like, you know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. It's like, can you make it clear? No, I made it clear. No, I made it clear. You understood. You heard me. <laughs> everything everything that just went through your mind in a picturesque kind of way is exactly what i meant so you know it's like let's not let's not become very black and white now <laughs> i know i know and you know i i'm noticing a tremendous amount of uh a, a tremendous lack rather of coping skills oh, i just wrote about that oh. i just wrote a personal essay about that oh. about people who they just either they don't want to use the coping skills because it requires work, hence the lazy nature of a lot of people. Or when their back is against the wall, they realize that they have to succumb to whatever outcome it's going to be because they just don't know how to deal with it. They, they don't know how to, how to just either pause or play it out or, they just don't know. Like they, 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 they finally realize in their thirties, it's like, oh shit, I don't know how to cope. Like, okay, how do I do this? Oh my god! Like, and it's like, honey, this is very normal about life. You definitely, you know, in your life, that you know, the little bit that I have learned from you about yourself. I mean, my goodness, you got you you got a lot of them real early. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was writing about. I was writing about how being very young. Um, I had to learn how to cope because mom never taught me that. Because mama in her life never knew about coping skills. That was another thing I learned having her live with me Mm. was that um, I had to find a level of forgiveness. I couldn't be angry at her for me being the child that I ended up enduring what I endured because she endured the same exact thing. Mm. And it happened when I was cooking, what I tend to do is I play a lot of old music from her time just to keep her in, in the moment. And she was singing all these old songs. I must say, there was a playlist of 100 Spanish songs that I'd never heard of. My lady only did, knew 99 of them. One she didn't know. <laughs> and as she's singing them, she's transporting in that time. And she starts sharing. And she starts sharing how she was seven her her mother died and she was left to her aunt who really didn't want her around because her aunt was light-skinned with the good hair and her daughters were the light skin with the good hair and here comes my mother cinnamon skin with kinky hair so mom became the house girl and was only allowed to go to school when welfare would pass by the house and say listen we're going to cut off the welfare case because Rosa hasn't been in school. And her, I was like, no, 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 no. She's been a little sick. She's going to go in and they would make her go to school enough to be on the radar. And now sometimes her aunt, to make extra money off my mother, would rent her out to clean houses and whatever else was needed. And here's my mother doing one of this at nine years old, 10 years old, 11 years old. She already knew about these things. So she didn't have none of those coping skills. So I never got them when I grew up either. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Survival. Survival. Oh, yeah. That's what she taught you more than anything. Right. That's that's it. That's it. Grit and endurance and relentlessness. That was it. That's why you was able Fun. to take. That's the way. That's why you were able to endure and take the shit you took. All the not so good shit that you went through that mm-hmm. would, have ki- would, would have killed the average person. And some of the things you told me about back in the day was, I was like, okay, I, I, I knew you had gone through some stuff, but some of the stuff you revealed, I was like, ooh, wait a minute, that that kind oh, yeah. of stuff, the average person can't even wrap their brain around, you know, what it is to really truly have to rely on yourself to get from one point to another point. 
there was a line in the essay and I remember writing it because when I wrote it, I had to stop. Chakaya had to stop and be like, wow. I said, um, it wasn't okay that the minute he touched my hand, I already knew how to separate my body from my spirit because I already knew what was going to happen. And I dropped the pen and I was like, okay, we're done for today. I'm not, okay, we're done. I was like, okay. All right, we're gonna leave that right there. We're not gonna touch that essay anymore. You know, I'm having like a page or two. I'm like, okay, okay. where the hell did that come from? But okay, yeah, you know, because you know, spirit, spirit constantly turns us out. You know, it, it constantly brings back those moments so that we are in the present, but it also digs it in deeper so that we don't repeat it. You know, yeah. I mean, it's 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 here. Yeah, being spiritual is tough. Would Tell my father, should... you. I'm like, baby, I don't know how you do it, huh? <laughs> 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 I'm gonna tell you, man. I, I I think that all like like you know. I always say everybody in the village got a skill. Oh and, my God! So well said. So and well it, said. And we need all of us, you know, because when the kids were raised in the village, when it was time to learn how to make a bow, you know, your dad might have sucked at making bows. Right. You, know, you we got to go over to the bow guy's house. <laughs> and then learn you just how to do that right right and then you know so everybody's got something they can they can share and as an artist your stuff's coming out of you whether you want it to come out or not <laughs> apparently so true. as artists um as artists it's like if you're not creating i can't even imagine what an artist goes through if they're not creating Ooh, the insanity comes back. The voices come back. I'll be like, honey, draw something, do something, but just don't sit there because, girl, you ain't no phone. You're going to look crazy when you finish all of this. That's why they're all going crazy now because of the pandemic. Nobody's performing. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, that's hard. That's a, that's a tough one. That is no a tough one. No one's making money. Everything's virtual. It's not the same. There's no energy to feed off of people when you're performing. So you're going to have to create this energy. It's, it's, it's tough. It's, it's, I feel bad for the ones that are still green. You know, I've been in the industry for quite a bit, so I understand the dynamics of it, but those freshly, I'm, I'm here, honey. I don't know how you're going to survive this one, boy. Yeah. Because you know how we were when we were 19, 18, 19, 20, 15, trying to allow that art to breathe allow it out right and now it's a whole other thing they're coming you're absolutely it's right it's they're coming into it's theirs subject. yeah that's that's and there's yeah. no energy to feed off that they have i hadn't to thought of it, it that way yeah now they have to create it and actually build it on that like they're never going to experience the the most integral part of why we do what we do is the audience that's right that's when you do a yeah, when you do a monologue and you throw it out to the audience, there's a healing process between them and us. Yeah. These yeah, fresh they, ones don't get that. Yeah. They do not get that benefit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Trying to do it online. It's I mean it's it's a very interesting dynamic that is happening with people who are who are who are live performers. Um, mm -hmm. you know, music, spoken word, theater. Um mm -hmm. It's a, it's, it's taken that, that segment of the art world, all art, all segments are getting hit, but the present performing art arts, mm -hmm. that group is, you know, cause oh, yeah. so, look, I got painters who don't want to see nobody for a year. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Sculptors and all kinds of amazing artists, you know, some writers, you know, they're, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they, that's a different thing. But the ones like yourself who still, I just saw, on the wait, did, right. Did you just, I just saw something you posted from not sure when or what, but you stand, I don't know. It was we in just a, had a show the day before yesterday. Right, in a bar yeah, so or Soul Tree. Right, yes, it was at the bar. Yes, um, that was at Feathers. Yeah, that's amazing. Up in upper Manhattan. Just to see you standing and just speaking, I thought that's what he does. That's what yeah. it is. You know, we have to do mm -hmm. it. And it was so beautiful to see uh to see that, you know. Uh well, what were you recite what were you doing? What were you reciting? Um, I was a featured poet, so I had uh I had a, 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 a poem called Welcome to the Ghetto. And really what it was, is just an ode to the times of what we grew up, not what 
they know, not the New York they know, the New York we know. You know, the New York where either 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 you bend, baby, or you, or you die. I mean, there's no, there's, you know, there was no, I can talk my way out of it, no, bro. You're going to go to the corner, there's going to be a whole bunch of brothers up there. 90% of them are going to be addicts. The other 90% are going to be murderers. And you're going to have to slow your roll, move with your head up, and keep it moving. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So I was giving them, you know, like all the, the you know, when the spoken word was all picturesque and they were able, to, like, they were all young. The crowd was so young. They were generation X, Y, and millennials. <laughs> so, right. so they found that they were like, oh my God, is that real? And I was like, yeah. Yeah. That spoken was word real. artists. Yeah. We speak the real stuff, honey. I don't know what kind of poets do you know. Yeah. That's why the like poets I, are the son of the time. Just recently, I posted something with, uh, you know, with, with Marsha on there and so many folks were still going who's marcia i was like you know from the from the whole pride arena so it's like you know you can't yeah don't say who's marcia out loud uh just i guess <laughs> don't say that out loud I'll take your card they should take your card uh, <laughs> but google she, honey because you have your phone and just find out real quick yeah because the thing is that kind of the you know what people were going through we talk about activism and you know when your very existence was activism? Yes, yes, say that. Yes. In the 70s and the 80s, we each were a walking activism. We weren't part of, we were the. You yeah, know what thank I mean? you. Wasn't and, and like, we're part of, were the. Yeah. We weren't part of, we were the. Like, we... we, we we had to walk out and, and, and there was no alternative for us. It, it just, I told the young gay kids, I'm like, baby, you guys got it so sweet. So sweet. You can walk, you know, you go to New York City, I still gag at when I watch those hip hop boys walking all tough and when they turn around, their face is painted. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. You try to do that shit in the 70s, 80s, you was going to get knocked in your mouth. Like, yeah. you wasn't going to, you know, something was going to happen to you. That's right. How did these children walk out painted? <laughs> and I'm like, wow, you guys have really had a, this is there. Yeah, we did this. We did yeah. this. For you yeah. guys to do that, we did this. Yeah. And, yeah, it's, yeah. and it's and it's and it's and it's out of control out here, baby. It's yeah. all over. You come to New York, or there's no way on earth you're not, you're not going to be traveling in New York, and you're not going to see a boy in full on makeup, yeah, dress hip hop, and done, honey, pretty, like pretty, <laughs> like you can look and tell he's got full on war paint, <laughs> <laughs> and I just be like, wow. Wow, okay, we've come a long fucking way because, yeah, we couldn't do that. <laughs> you kept those shit see If you did, you did that, you know, behind closed doors or very secretly. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? No, <laughs> honey, the children are out and about and I'm like, wow. Yeah. That's when I say, isn't it happy to be gay and free? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 for sure. Because we didn't I get that. Yeah, we didn't have that. <sighs> It's just really powerful. That's so powerful. And I, I'm, you know, and I know that during these times, you got to be. There's got to be so much in you. I don't. I don't know how because I know you're not only a performer but writer. And, yes. Um, that's got to just. I'm in the middle of writing my second book. I'm writing my second book. Yeah. It's called Maricon, which in Spanish is uh -huh. faggot. So that's the name of the book, Maricon. I, I'm like that's it. That's going to be the name of the book. I'm not changing it. I'm going to keep it just like that. I'm just deciding on. Uh, different concepts. I don't know if I'm gonna do the cover where I have pictures of me going through my gay youth. Mm. You know, when I was a little kid, when I was, a, you know, when I was a drag queen, when I was coming out of moans, and then when I became a boy and now an older man, or just have different types of gays on the cover. I don't yeah. know. I'm deciding that. But the essays yeah, think, are whooping my to guy they're whooping my ass. I the know. Essays are whooping my because <laughs> you because you know what. I think you already know it's got to be you on the cover. <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be you, because it ain't about it ain't about nobody else. Right. It's about right. you, and the process and everybody the process. else. Right. Right. Everybody else that couldn't that lived. So it's so it's you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I you know what? You because saying. as soon as you said that, I was just like, yeah, because through through that's through you is how you are the conduit for this segment 
of this for the for the for the mm-hmm. more for the yeah. presentation of this it's it's you that was gonna yeah. be a one-man show attached to that i guess yeah because it's so you've gone through you've gone through a lot and you are still thriving and quite frankly didn't everybody make it no no i think about that all the time yeah. I think about that's that's when i started to take um the spirit work a whole lot serious when i mm. sat down and i said Dre, you're one of the very few in your circle that are still here you look okay for your age you don't really get sick what's up you know there's got to be a reason. Like God doesn't do shit just to do shit. Right? I'm sorry. You know, <laughs> spirit <laughs> doesn't exist just to exist. You know what I mean? If if you're chosen, it's because you have something. You have something to do in your lifetime. And 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 I've come to terms that a lot of the stuff I put up on theater, it it, it you know it does a lot. It, it does a lot for people that I don't realize until, you know, I, I've done one man shows where I've had a woman come up to me and say. I was born out of my ass. A friend of mine told me to come along. She didn't know that I had two bags of dope in my purse. And every time I wanted to get up to go to the bathroom and get high, you would do a monologue and it would snap me out of it. And then at the end, when I found out that you wasn't, uh, that you're a recovering addict, I was like, okay. I went to the bathroom and I dumped the two fucking bags of dope. And I was like, okay, this is way bigger than me. This is, I, I am so not it right now. Wow. Like I, I can tell you stories of, of stuff that happens to me when I do shows that I'm like, okay, Andre, this is spirit work. This isn't, they're allowing you to have fun on stage, but don't ever take it lightly while you're on stage. Hmm. That's powerful, man. That's powerful. It, it, freaks me, it freaks me out, you guy. It freaks me out. It yeah. freaks me out. Yeah. Because you just getting, yeah. you just doing you, getting through your day. Right, right. Yeah, I'm just like having fun. Great, it's wonderful. I get to memorize. I'm in full character, whoever that character is. But I had to realize that that character is a living entity for somebody. That character that Andre is playing, that truly is doing it full on, for him it's playtime. Right now, someone in the audience is reliving a moment that they have to relive to that character. What's up? You know what I mean? So be authentic to that character as well. Yeah. <laughs> really Please. something that is that's really something especially now i'm so glad you're writing because i know uh, a couple of artists i talked to you know talked about how they had that shutdown like that like their minds their pull everything was just like they, they felt like they couldn't do anything and uh, more than one artist i talked to about that and then yeah. then they start going crazy like you were talking about before <laughs> if you're not getting this out <laughs> Creative people have to create, otherwise the voices become stronger than the minds, and you're going to gag. I see it all the time. I see it all the time. I have a lot of my friends can't write. As a matter of fact, it's so bad out here that I could say 90% of New York City is in trauma mode, and they don't even know it. The minute they opened up the stores, there was lines, and I said, half of these people are shopping because they're traumatized and they're trying to find some type of normalcy because they were not ready to be in their own skin. Look at them. They got to do stuff to be outside of their skin because they can't handle their own skin. They're traumatized. It's crazy. Ooh. No, that, mm-hmm. You know what? That's real deep. Trying to find folks faced with themselves um, in this time of lockdown and COVID. I, one, one friend had me cracking up because he has a son son is like uh you know grammar school age and he simply realized that he the time he spends with his son he's fine there's no trauma there's no drama but but in the morning he goes to work kids goes to school so he sees him in the morning you know sees him in the afternoon and they do the thing and there's dinner then he's in bed you know then on the weekend they do a little something something covid shows up and now he's dealing with a little dude like all day every day parents are becoming real (laughs) you're forced to become a parent you're forced to realize what the hell you're raising up right and he had some eye-opening experiences about his own son and about himself yes i'm so you know what you 
you're here in New York. So many parents are not, they weren't ready. <laughs> he wasn't. They were not, they were not ready. He wasn't ready. You know what? And the, and the beautiful thing about it is the fact that he, when he realized he, see, he wasn't ready for the negative or the positive. Wow. 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 That's deep. He wasn't that's ready. when you start realizing, I really don't know my kid. Yeah, that's that's where it was like, you know what, got to re... At first, everything was just annoying and funny. Because like, like, okay, I'm annoyed, but I got to laugh at myself because that's just funny that I'm so annoyed. So, But that only could la that can only hold you for a while. That becomes stale real quick. Right, and then the depth of it started to hit him. And that's when, you know, he kind of reached out Ooh. to me and said, I, he was like, he was like, Papa Witch... Uh, I don't know what <laughs> I said. You're all right. You're okay. <laughs> I just told yeah. him. <laughs> you're gonna get it, honey. You're gonna get it, boo. Because you're gonna have to get it. <laughs> I would have said the same thing. I would have been like, "Don't worry about it, baby. You won't get it. You'll be all right. You might want to. You might want to start drinking at eleven and not wait till twelve. You won't be all right. Yeah, I think you're allowed. I think you're gonna be allowed right now. Yeah, and a lot, of, a lot of people out here in New York bugged out on the same thing. They were like, "Yo, my kid is a fucking nasty bastard." <laughs> I'm like, oh, they were like, "I didn't know my kid had such a nasty attitude." I'm like, "Wonder where he gets it from." Mm. And mm -hmm. it forces you to look at yourself, and a lot of people don't want to do that. Still with COVID, because I believe, and I tell all my people that come for readings or whatever, I tell them, let me tell you something. This is the time that the universe has given you to realign yourself and get better with yourself. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why solitude is the number one factor for the world to heal. Yeah. You want the world to heal, everyone's got to be in their own space by themselves for a very long time, for long amounts of time. What are you doing with that? Because you can't, you can't have sex all the time. Because that ain't happening. Social skills out here are dead. You can't. You can only do with so much eating. You can't shop because everything was closed for two months straight. What's left? You gotta, you gotta reintroduce yourself to yourself. Yeah. What happened? You can't do that. <laughs> and a lot of people were not able to do that. Papa Witch, they weren't. They weren't even wanting a part of it. And I'm just looking at them like. Mm. Mm. And many people are having a very, very difficult time with just dealing with themselves. And, and as you and I both know, art, you know, again, it's the getting it out like some kind of way. And like, you know, with many of my clients, I always, well, with all of my clients, when we do retreats and things, I would there, I always incorporate some sort of art, some sort of possible vehicle to help people to get stuff out. Yes. And the way folks will you know, most folks quite often just like, I, like, no, I'm not, I'm not an artist. I don't, I don't know how to do that. I was like, no, it's not about knowing how to do that. You know, when you there, you you inhale and you exhale. So <laughs> we are spiritual beings trying to have a human experience, and our humanness is the worst <laughs> we block everything i can't do this i can't do that i'm not no no that's not for me i you know i, I did you try it no but i know it's not for me so how do you know it's not for you <laughs> i i know people who have never painted and gave it a try and oh shit like they were fucking amazing i was like i thought you didn't draw they were like i didn't know either <laughs> like, that's, that looks like you know like some real professional shit <laughs> It's so true. So, Simply just get it out of your head. Just get it out of there. Get it out of your just heart. Get it, get it out. out of, just, just get, get it out. out. That's it. Just in any way. I guess that's something I never asked you before. When, when, when did you actually start performing? Like on stage performing? Because just in oh, your I've life, just in your life I've life. I've been doing that as a kid. I've been doing that as a kid. Like huh. as a kid. Like I remember going to the church going to the pastor and saying, can we have the auditorium to throw a talent show? And I was like 14, 15. And the priest saying, sure. And I got all my talented hood friends. And we were singing freestyle songs with choreography and doing scenes and packing the place because all our parents would come. And the priest was like, wow, like really? And we were like, yeah, we're donating the money to you guys. We don't want the money. We just want a place to perform. So I've been doing this since a kid. You know what I mean? <laughs> that is awesome.
<laughs> that is so. I had a feeling it was going to be something like that, and I never yeah. asked you that before. Yeah, since I was a little kid, yeah. oh, and I've been God. writing all my life. Um, when I started taking workshops, um, this woman, one of my mentors, called Vanessa Martier, she's a beast. Um, she was like, "If you're here, it's because you like memoir." But if you're here, it's because you've been a memoirist for the longest time. And I'm looking at her like, not really. And she was like, did you ever keep a diary? I said, yeah, since, since I could start writing. She goes, you've been a memoirist all your life. You just never realized it. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, right. Wow, I've been, I've been keeping a diary since I was 13. Yeah, that's deep. The diary of Anne Frank, what age was she? Yeah. 13, 14, 15. She was right. a memoirist. But she didn't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that some shit? That is. When she shit. put it like that, I was like, yo, I've been set up to do what I'm doing way before I even knew what I was supposed to do. Yeah. And here you are still doing, <laughs> still doing it and thriving mm -hmm. and doing your thing. Oh my God. Ah, this is now, how is it over there? Is it very, um, it's, uh, you're by countryside or you're in the city? You know what? I'm in, I'm, um, in very close to jungly type of area. And, you know, I always a, picture you in that. I can't see you too long in city. Yeah. And you know how much I love the city. This is one of the things about, I, know. I love the city and I also love the jungle and the mountains and all that stuff. And I equally completely differently love the city. So this is why when people say, what's your favorite? I don't have a favorite because they nurture me and such different ways when i'm in the city and know that me and you sitting down having a cup of coffee could suddenly go let's go watch something live tonight <laughs> like i'm in a or, yeah let's go yeah, somewhere like, right let's go watch you know, like to, you know or i heard something is happening at at, at, the, at the at the whatever museum you know oh the there's club. this exhibit of, let's just go i mean that type of thing you know, is what you love this city for. Oh, there's just so much, and it's so rich. And if you really need to get out of the city, it's 20 minutes across the bridge. You don't get you. Ain't, really is. You know, don't act like you stuck. You, you just go any direction. 20 minutes <laughs> outside of the Bronx, and you're good. <laughs> and you're outside. You're outside. You're outside, and then there's freedom. So the city has always been something. Ever since I started, you know, um, yeah, the city has always been really special to me. But also being out in the woods. But here in Bali is 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 uh, is is pretty damn epic. Um, it's it's an amazing mentality of spirituality here and there are different people who believe different stuff and it's I, it, it's mostly people are really connected with their spiritual selves even people who would consider themselves atheists still have a spiritual existence and how they roll so nice. so yeah so the, constantly here there's always going to be um you know offerings are made every single day you just because i thought when i first got here i thought oh you guys having a festival this week or something they go what do you it, no th we do this every day several times a day wow flowers and incense with little wow fruits fruit oh wow everywhere every day and so that sense of you don't have to know what they're doing you don't even have to know what they're doing when you see someone offering a thing and lighting an incense and doing it you don't have to know what they're doing it's a moment of reverence it's a moment of thanks it's a moment of blessing and offering giving back giving, giving back. back right you don't have to know what it is and so that general thing happens and then every thursday as far as the hindu side goes Every Thursday, folk, uh, women and men, many of them are dressed up in traditional garb. So again, you're thinking, oh, there must be a festival. No, it's Thursday, boo. <laughs> yeah. We're in our, <laughs> uh, in our fabulous city. <laughs> right. And so, and so when there is a wow. festival, it's amazing. So, it, it's, so wow. that type of thing is very, very normal. And I have to laugh at myself because... I am not a child of Oshun, but she's always up in my grill. So, <laughs> oh, I I so see that, honey. Please, I be peeping you. I be like, what are so, you up to? so here you go. 
right? So All up. I have been joking about my connection, non-connection with Ashun for like 20 years. <laughs> like because <laughs> <laughs> but I can feel I can feel the essence of the Oshun thing. And then of course I end up to a place next to a river. <laughs> I was like and didn't even know You had was... a picture where you was walking down a trail. And I was like and I remember like you know, like he's doing the greenery thing and I'm like, oh my god, it's a... do I hear a fucking river in it? Yeah, right. <laughs> I said shit. What I would do if I was in that river, huh? I'd be right. throwing money and flowers. I, I know. <laughs> yeah, it would be red, red fabric all along the banks and on rocks all and, day, uh, honey. and and yellow, yellow gold and and shells and. It would get to a point where people would want to walk in the jungle and be like, "You have to see this American. I think he's being kind of deity. Look what he is doing." And I would just be in my revelry, like, "Ta da da, all beautiful, <laughs> just chilling." Right yeah, doing walk, dancing. Wait, walking around with your pearls dangling. In front of you. Absolutely, absolutely. With all the what, like Lala and her seven veils. Right. You know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Just absolutely. being fabulous daily. And you know what? You, but you know the funny thing is, if you did that in Bali, most of the Balinese would be like, "Okay." <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> I would hear the had to stop. Yeah, <laughs> everything's on a standstill. Everything's on a standstill, honey. No churches can congregate. They just open up the church mm. for like two hours, so everyone goes and packs it up for two hours to pray. It's very different. Anyone that's doing a lot of initiations for Isha, they're not getting it done because it yeah. takes a village, and everybody has they can't do the protocols. No, you can't. You can't. So do you're it in properly. a place that they can still do it. Oh, it's a it's a rebooting inside and out. Um, it sure is, baby. It sure is. It really, really is. It, this has been a game changer for many, many people. I believe it's the most biggest wake up call the world has gotten in a long time. Yeah, for in sure. A long, long time. Oh, you got to figure it out. Yeah. Sorry, I can only give you so much because a lot of it has to do with you. You know the old saying, honey, we can lead the horse to water, we can't force it to drink. Yeah. There's a lot of thirsty horses out here, let me tell you. Pop of which, there's a lot of thirsty people out here. I'd be like, ooh, chill. Mm. <laughs> You'd be surprised what a simple prayer can do for your life right now. <laughs> <laughs> I stay praying. I wake up praying, but I, if I'm sleeping and I wake up to use the bathroom, I the minute I get up, I'm praying out for the Lord. Please bless the world. Please give everyone some type of clarity and some empathy and uh, and I'll fall back to it. Prayers on my lips. Yeah, automatically. Yeah. Automatically. It's it's interesting how when you when you have a, a routine um and a and a at a regimen that you do, it took a while to get it to that place and then it just starts being there. It's just, just part of who we are, Papa Rich. Yeah. Because I'm I'm in a it's constant just, state of pranayama and uh, and mantras, which is the same as what you're talking about. Absolutely, it's like they're just yeah. in they're just in there. And literally, when I wake up in the morning, I immediately oh. get conscious of my breath, and then some kind of little mantra, or even in just even just humming. That's why when I do my meditations, we don't do generally because I can you know we can go all deep, but when I'm teaching your my basic Class, we don't even do om. We just hum. We just I hum. hum. I, yeah. I stay humming. Hum. I stay. Hum, I stay humming when I'm sweeping. When I'm taking out the garbage. When I'm walking the platforms, making sure that they're safe. I hum. Yeah. I've had people stop and be like, "Did you just hum?" I'm like, "Yeah, you heard that." Because I'm thinking <laughs> that I'm humming to go deeper in my chest to kind of stimulate the lungs and 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 just keep breath and air. In constant flux, you know what I mean? Because that's why I hum. I hum to just keep my frequency and a protective <laughs> level. People are like, did you just hum? I was like, yeah, you heard that? And in my head, I'm like, if you heard that, that means you needed it. Because I've been, I was humming real low. <laughs> right, like, like communicating with another elephant. <laughs> like, you know, right. Because you know they yeah, do that yeah, low. Exactly, right. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Exactly. Perfect example, yeah. Um, 
what happens with me too is that sometimes the prayer that comes out is not the prayer that I'm used to. It's a whole different prayer because mm. the spirits at that moment are like, no, we need this one today. Or you need to be on this frequency today. And it'll just come out and I'll be like, wow, I haven't said that prayer in so long. Wow. Mm. Okay, got it. You know, they give me the messages early in the morning. They let me know what my day is going to be like. And you then know, they'll be like, strap yourself with the new troubling or, you know. Because this is very practical stuff, you know, because like, I think sometimes, you know, when, when spirituality comes up, it seems like, oh, here we go, metaphysical hoo-ha, blah, blah. No, no, this is very practical application <laughs> to your well-being in your body, your mind, your heart, and your overall whatever you want to call it. It's a very, very practical thing. So I've had in my workshops, I've taken quote unquote, spiritual quotes or spiritual mantras or verses. And I'll have everybody, I want you to interpret this because you don't have to believe anything to understand the gist behind it. So don't let the fact that this came from Hindu or this came from Christian or this came from Jewish or this came, never mind that. Does, is it saying anything that's, uh, that, that, that's making any sense to you on any level? It's different everybody <laughs> right so it don't matter whether jesus said have a nice day or the dalai lama said have a nice day or if mm -hmm. krishna said have a nice day how's your exactly. day going right <laughs> right and can we please end off by saying what are you going to do to continue the good frequency for your day whatever that involves well there it is right for there. some people for, for some people it's a great bowel movement fine <laughs> You know what I mean? For some people, it's just smiling at one person. Yeah. Whatever that looks like. Can we please just continue that for the rest of the day? Please. <laughs> I don't Tumble think it's not easy, baby. I was like, I don't, I don't think that's too much to ask. <laughs> right? Right? It's like, but you know, people have a tendency to make things so big that they don't do nothing. Like, when they get to that, it's like, it's like, well, you can, oh, but there's so much and the, the world is, whoa, whoa, baby, let's not talk about the world yet. Let's world, talk yeah. about, let's, let's just get, let's deal with what's in the kitchen. Just, right. <laughs> just open up the cupboard and let me know what the hell you got in there. Don't tell me what it's going to taste like if you put the ingredients in. Yeah, like relax. You know what? Being overwhelmed is extremely convenient. I, you know, and in a world where, people are so used to being fast paced mm. they're starting to get to a point where if they're not overwhelmed they're not living right. uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah and it's like no honey life is not to be overwhelmed life is actually to be in the, the moment the and actually yeah. enjoy the moment it's 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 yeah right like calm is actually a real emotion that's why it's under the it is on the ride. list damn it Sometimes it's okay to just sit and have nothing to do. Yeah. Yeah. And not That's feel okay. and not feel guilty. I feel like, no, baby, maybe the universe is giving you this day because you need it. Take mm -hmm. advantage of it. Read a book <laughs> or just sit in the bed and do nothing. Just sit and feel your whole body. Let your to talk to you. What is it telling you? Yeah. And try to be comfortable in that space. And in, in that space. It's so hard for people to do that. Every year uh, here in Bali, they have um, their new year. It happens at different times because they're on the lunar calendar. But they have what they call Nyepi, their new year. And this year it happened. And it usually happens on the around in some time in March. This year, I happen to be here for it. And what it is, is the entire, and this is basically Bali. Everything stops for 24 hours. The, wow. airport, the airport, everything turns off. Your electricity is going off at noon. Are you serious? Your internet is going down. Ain't, no go, ain't gonna be no street lights on tonight. <laughs> everything wow. turns off. Yeah, and you're supposed to stay home. They have people, wow. volunteers in the street 
to make sure you stay your ass home. So if they see somebody in the street, they just say, please go back into your house. What a way to greet the new year. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, with no. calmness, no drama. Mm-hmm. That you, that body's energy itself accepts that and be like, okay, we're good. Yeah, like a whole nation just says, okay, everybody stop. Just That's everybody, it. just stop. No matter what's going on, just stop. I went online to try to figure out, you know, well, I want to get some more information on this. So I looked at a few travel things. And of course, you know, lots of foreigners, you know, are, who were here during that time, who posted things. They were doing everything in their power to break it or to try to sneak out or to let me see if I can get some photos of the street with nobody on it. Or, or we're not supposed to be online right now. But it's like, why aren't you embracing? Well, you could tell the, you know what? You could have told us all this all the way up until it. And then you could tell us all of it right after it. After. Tell us mm-hmm. what's about to happen. Then do the thing. Be honorable. Be respectful. And then afterwards, tell us what your experience was. No, nope, people were. And I thought, you know what? This is one of the things in the West and not only in the West, but mainly in the West, because that's where we're from. And that's what we know. Mm-hmm. And right. the mentality, if you told the U.S., okay, everybody stop for 24 hours, everything just turn off, turn off the internet, turn off the everything for 24 hours. Folks would, would die. Jumping off of every bridge in New York. <laughs> Absolutely. They couldn't handle the lockdown we had over here. Right. With everything they still turned on. That. Just stay home. Just the stay home part. Folks can't handle it and still can't handle no. it and still protesting. They still. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it it's a completely different dealio here, but it's an eye opener and I'm and I am very, very grateful that I have the opportunity to sit here and talk to you. We're gonna take this moment to just be in the moment. And trying to continue to be nurturing to myself first, because you know you gotta put that oxygen mask on yourself before you start trying to help everybody else on the plane. Oh, uh, so well said. <laughs> so well said, honey. So that's really what I'm doing, trying to the best of my ability, and then you know, calling people who inspire me. And not only people who inspire me, but just people, friends associates and realizing that we all as i said earlier we all have something to add to the mix everybody in the village got a skill and just being ourselves we're able to help other people when we don't have any idea that we're helping anybody and you do that and you do that you know you You have no idea how amazing it was for me and i know this is random as hell but one of the times I was in New York, we were at a theater and there was a young lady with us and you guys improv a scene on the stage. And Her it, name was Lily. At that point, I hadn't thought about how long it had been since not only was I just on the stage, but on the stage, literally creating in the moment. Mm. And the two of you doing that See, I'm talking about it right now. It affected me. And y'all was just fucking around. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Her her mother's name was Nani. We were in um, the theater by uh, the Lower East Side. We were in Teatro Sea. Yeah. Yeah. And we were, and you guys, and you did something, and then you guys improv this scene. Art in action. You are art in action. Thank you. And Thank I appreciate you. it. And I'm going to let you get on with your slumber. I uh, appreciate you. And, I uh, enjoyed this to the utmost. <laughs> My God, I love this. Ah, I felt like we had a first date, honey. Yeah, right? I was like... with the wine and the coffee. I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> it's so great. It's so much fun to see you, and uh, and we're gonna and we'll be chatting soon. Definitely chat soon. You stay blessed. Uh-huh. Stay loved and continue doing your thing, my love. Right on, you too, baby. And I will definitely uh, contact you pretty soon. Let me know what's up, my friend. I will. Stay blessed, Papa. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. See you later. <laughs> 
I'd like to thank Andre for being my guest today. For more information about Chulisi, the chulo who takes it easy, check out Chuli Boo on Instagram. Thanks for dropping in. Be sure to comment, share, and subscribe. Cheers. See you next time. Hey, that's how we get by. That's how we survive.